In adventure travel throughout the world, the core ethos has always been leave no trace. At polar latitudes, we don't think that's good enough. We think that we should strive to leave a place better for us having been there. And that's why we focus on science as our way of contributing to this unique and beautiful environment. My name is John McCune. I'm the president and CEO and founder uh, of Polar Latitudes. And I'm here with my colleagues at SWOOP, who we've invited to come down to Antarctica with us and see how our philosophy about science underpins our entire operation. Hi, I'm Burnham, and I work for SWOOP Antarctica. I'm a photographer and videographer. I've seen humpback whales up close, kayaked through ice, and photographed everything from orca to albatross. I've spent over 1,200 hours on Antarctic expeditions, and no two journeys have been the same. At Swoop, we help people write their own adventure story. So come with me as we discover what yours could look like. Let's do this. In this chapter, I'm sailing with Polar Latitudes to learn how citizen science can help travellers have a positive impact while exploring the white continent. So as someone who is not a scientist, I'm really looking forward to learning more about Polar Latitudes Citizen Science Program. I just think it's really cool to take part in something that's a meaningful scientific program and to make actual real life contributions. So it's definitely a journey into the unknown for me, but I think that makes it much more compelling. Hello. Hi. Rachel? Yes. Hi, Burnham. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you How too, you? finally. So, is this a Citizen Science Hub on board? It certainly is, nice. yeah. Nice. So you've got the set up. Yeah, we've got some um, phytoplankton under the scope that you can have a look at and a few other bits and pieces as well. That's cool. Now, I'm quite new to all this, so what actually is Citizen Science? Uh, citizen science is something that anybody can get involved with. So you don't need a degree, you don't need to be a scientist but you can go out, make observations, and then submit that to a project and it can have some really meaningful uh, data. Hi, my name's Rachel and I'm the Citizen Science Project Coordinator on board. A lot of the projects that we run, um, we run uh, citizen science projects because in Antarctica it's very difficult to get to, it's expensive, and to mount research expeditions down here um, can be, you know, too expensive so taking the collective of the tourism industry down here and people's willingness to get involved and um, they can actually collect a huge amount of data that individual scientists wouldn't be able to collect on their own and that's really really important um, not just for science in Antarctica but Antarctica is essentially the beating heart of the rest of the world. It drives the world's oceans, it affects the climate and the local weather systems all the way around the world. So what is happening in Antarctica um, has major impacts and influences on what happens around the rest of the world. So understanding what goes on here is fundamentally important to everything else that we're trying to learn about the world. I see you've got a picture of uh, the whale identification, yeah. the happy whale. I, yeah. I photographed a whale last year uh, that never been identified, so that's cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if somebody else photographs that and then they'll know it's your whale, you'll get a notification say your whale has shown up somewhere else. Yeah, I know, it's great. That'd yeah, love cool. happy whale. <laughs> the happy whale is the only citizen science program that I have any previous experience with. It's a really cool project uh, that utilizes tourists' photos to identify whales through their dorsal fins and the markings on their flukes. Mm -hmm. And it's a great non-invasive way of tracking whales over a period of time across the entire world. What I really love about happy whale is that it gives people not only a scientific connection to the whales, but also an emotional one. By seeing something in the flesh and being able to name it and to track it across the world almost creates like a kind of bond between the whale and the person. And I think that's really powerful, particularly if you want people to connect with these whales to protect them going forward. So 
So are you ready to give some of these projects a go? Absolutely. Over the following weeks, I participated in all of the citizen science programs offered on board. From cloud watching and seabird surveys, to collecting phytoplankton samples and measuring secchi depth. What on earth is a secchi disc? <laughs> <laughs> a secchi disc is basically, is this thing here. It's this white disc with the black lines, or you can also get white ones as well. Um, and it fundamentally measures the turbidity of the water. However, Secchi discs aside, it wasn't only the citizen science programs that I was enjoying, but also the incredible wildlife encounters. Just had such a good cruise. Had like humpbacks literally all around us. Couldn't believe it. And it's getting better and better. Yesterday we had orca coming up to the ship, so that's so good. <laughs> Having participated in the traditional citizens and science projects, I was keen to speak to Steve, a scientist on board, about Polar Latitude's broader commitment to Antarctic scientific research. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing here and how Polar Latitude is helping you achieve that? Yeah, so Dick and I work for a group called Oceanides. It's a long-term monitoring project. We've been looking at penguin populations in the, across the Antarctic Peninsula and elsewhere in the, in the area for about 30 years now. And uh, our, our mission is to get enough data to provide that to decision makers uh, who are managing part of the Antarctic, either the fisheries, the tourism, uh, and so forth. And it turns out that our data has been uh, also very instrumental in helping us identify what happens uh, in this changing climate. This area of Antarctica is changing more rapidly than uh, any place else uh, on the planet almost. And Polar Latitudes has been very generous to offer us a berth on ships. It's really difficult to get down to Antarctica on dedicated research pencils. It's very expensive. Uh, it's great to have a, a partner that can, can t bring us south, get us to the places we need to go, which are penguin rookeries, like that behind me, and, uh, and get our work done. After talking with Steve, I managed to speak to several of the guests about their citizen science experience with Polar Latitudes. So you were on the boat with me earlier. How did you how did you find this in science? I mean, I thought it was great to get an opportunity like that to do a science experiment in the middle of Antarctica and this beauty, amazing. Would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I feel like I've learned a lot about uh, the ecosystem and environment around here during the cruise, and so it was fun to be able to give back in a very small way to like helping protect it and. Uh, help uh, like just learn more about what's going on. Would you recommend it to, to people coming on the next voyages? 100%. You have to go and try it out and on the way back we get to like check out what they've kind of taken out so I'm looking forward to that. All right thank you so much um, for coming along. I have been blown away by the enthusiasm uh, for everybody wanting to get involved. Um, not just wanting to get involved but wanting to learn, wanting to find out what's going on down here not just to kind of you know take some pretty pictures so it's really nice it's really heartwarming and it makes this feel so much more worthwhile so thank you thank you so much for getting involved as the end of my voyage neared i could only reflect on what had been an incredible few weeks and especially what john had said to me at the start of this journey when I first got the invite from John and the team at Polar Latitudes to come on board and see how they focus on citizen science, I was a little bit sceptical. As I said at the start of this journey, I sailed with many operators and they all do mainly offer some citizen science programs. But now having spent time on board, their ethos towards citizen science and their passion actually is quite different. Polar Latitudes was the first operator to join the Science Polar Collective and they are still the only operator to offer citizen science programs on every single voyage. And to be frank, their mindset towards citizen science is quite different. In addition to their citizen science program, they often host important environmental organizations like Woods Hole and Oceanites, who without Polar Latitude's help, would have no chance of being able to conduct their scientific research in Antarctica. 
And for the guests on board, many of whom have no background in science whatsoever, they're suddenly given the opportunity to take part in scientific programs and to make meaningful impacts into programs that are seeking to protect the Antarctic ecosystem. At the start of this journey, John told me that he wanted polar latitudes to leave Antarctica a better place than they found it. And actually, I believe him. And with so many operators out there and so much choice these days, I can't think of a better reason than that to sail with someone. Thank you.